Hi there, my name is Zafar. In this video, we're going to learn how to construct a diamond structure. Well, before we proceed, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, do subscribe my channel just to get the latest videos coming from me. And like my channel. If you have any questions, you can leave them below in the comment section. I'll come to answer them. Now we shall proceed with the diamond structure. Well, one of the basic property of diamond structure is that it's the hardest material in the universe. In other words, it is used to cut many hard materials, but to cut a diamond, you need a diamond. So diamond is considered to be one of the hardest materials in the universe. One other property of diamond atom is that it is purely made up of carbon atoms. Now carbon comes from the group 4 of the periodic table and, this, and it is the first element of the group 4 of the periodic table. It means that it has 4 valence electrons or 4 electrons in its atom or shell. Now, for the carbon to become octet stable, it needs four more electrons from other carbon atoms just because diamond is purely made up of carbon atoms. So, it will gain four more electrons from four other carbon atoms just to attain octet stability. This is purely done by sharing of electrons and the bond formed in such a way is known as covalent bond. So diamond structure is purely made up of carbon atoms and carbon atoms themselves are bonded with each other through covalent bonding. Now before we proceed to construct a diamond structure, we must have a fine cube in front of you. Now this cube is basically a primitive, whereas a diamond structure is FCC in nature, that is it is face centered cubic. Well, before you can go to construct a phase FCC, you must have a primitive cell. Now, this is a primitive cell because it has the lattice points at the corners, four corners at the top and four corners at the bottom. The atoms in the carbon atom are a bit complicated other than the FCC. No doubt it's FCC, but as we know that FCC contains four atoms, whereas diamond contains eight atoms. Therefore, first we'll get the FCC which will attain four atoms and four more atoms will come from the interior structure, interior of the unit cell of the diamond. So there are about two types of atoms. So those atoms, those atoms at the face center and corners will be known as the exterior atoms whereas those atoms in the interior structure will be known as the interior atoms carbon atoms. Now before we proceed let's draw the atoms at the corners. So the one carbon atom will be over here. Remember the radii of the atoms should be same. In other words the diameter of the circles that you're drawing just to label the carbon atoms should be the same. No circles should be smaller, no larger but should have contain the same size because diamond has no impurities, it's purely made up of carbon atoms. Now these are the corners that have been located. You have to join the diagonals to get the face center. So if I imagine one to be over here and the bottom one over here, on the left, here, right here, and for the back face, I'm going to draw it as a dotted circle just to represent the back face and the front of and for the front face here now to differentiate these atoms exterior atoms from the interior i'm going to color them red there you go color them in red There you go, the exterior atoms have been labeled as red, red in color. For the interior atoms, we're going to color them blue. Now let's see where did these atoms lie. The exterior atoms were found at corners plus face center 
Now for the interior atoms. Remember, diamond is purely made up of carbon atoms. So, for the interior atoms, the specific positions are given as These are the four positions for the exterior atoms. As you can see, the positions are in fractions, but it's okay if you know the exact positions where to place these interior carbon atoms. Let's go and scale out this edge at the bottom. If I just consider this to be my zero point or the origin and the length up to origin from the other atom is one, then somewhere here will be a midpoint and it will be 0.5 and the distance from 0 up to 0.5 the midpoint will be 0.25 and 0.5 to 1 the midpoint will be somewhere over here to be 0.75 this is a quarter and it stands for 0.25 and 3 by 4 stands for the numerical value 0.75. Now we'll do the same along the vertical axis. If this is my unit length, somewhere over here will be 0.5, the half length distance, and from 0 to 0.5, will I'll attain a position 0.25, and somewhere down here 0.75. I'll do the same for the this edge, 0.5 here, 0.75, and for the starting point. Five. You must have a coordinate system to locate the positions of the interior atoms. If I have this to be my region, then the horizontal axis will be my x-axis, the vertical axis will be labeled as y-axis, and this along distance inside the crystal will be my z-axis. Remember, first position is along the x-axis, the second is for the y-axis and the third one for the z-axis. These basically give the magnitudes of the coordinates in this system. And let's go and locate the positions of the interior atoms. For the first interior atom, you have to follow a distance of quarter along the x-axis. This is from the region up to 0.5. Then along the y-axis a quarter distance. This is somewhere here, label here. And 0.5, that is interior of the crystal along the z-axis, I'll get A atom over here that is the first location of my interior atom and I will label it 1 by 4 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 in other words quarter quarter and quarter for the second position I have to travel x-axis a distance of quarter that is 0.25 y-axis a distance of 3 by 4 that is 0.75 as I told you before that is along y-axis up to here and 0.75 again along Z axis that is somewhere down here. I'll get an atom, the interior atom. Now let's label this interior atom that is 1 by 4, 3 by 4, 3 by 4. For the third position, travel x axis a distance of 0.75 that is up to, up to here, then 0.25 along the y axis over here and 0.75 inside the crystal I'll reach somewhere down here the second this is the third position of my interior carbon atom that is 3 by 4 1 by 4 and 3 by 4 now for the last four interior carbon atom travel a distance of 0.75 along the x-axis up to here then 0.75 along the y-axis which I'll approach here and 0.25 inside the crystal somewhere down here this is the position for the fourth coordinate of the interior carbon atom I will color them in blue just to make the difference among the interior and exterior atoms here we go in blue 
the interior atoms. The story doesn't end here. As I told you before, the carbon atom belongs from the group 4 of the periodic table. It needs 4 more electrons to become octet stable. So these atoms have 4 valence electrons. They need 4 more to become stable. So the idea here is to make covalent bonding with the nearest atoms. So the nearest atom for this, um, for this position is at this corner first which I'll color it in, blue, in green and for this one is along this corner which is which this atom is very close to it and for this one this corner and for the above this corner we got the positions for the nearest corners of the interior carbon atoms they have made one bond now there are three remaining so the three remaining will come from the phase centers the nearest phase center so the nearest phase center for this interior carbon atom is the bottom phase center and the left phase center and the front phase center which is over here now for this second position it has made one bond with the corner and the remaining three will come from the nearest phase centers that is over here one is over here and the other one is at the back face center here now for this atom interior atom it has made one covalent bond with the corner and it's going to make three more covalent bonds with the face centers the nearest face centers again once again now the nearest face center over here for this atom is one is over here one is at the top And one is at this face center which is front over here the front face center now for the fourth coordinate it has made one covalent bond with this corner it will make its three other bonds with the nearest face center one is at the top one is at the back face center There you go. This is a construction of a diamond structure and you can see the total number of atoms in the diamond structure are 8. The contribution of the corners is 1 by 8. For the face centers is always, I'll just make it down here, is always half and the interior atoms are considered as a whole, one whole atom. So they are about 8 corners shared by 1 by 8 atom plus there are about 6 faces and each face has a contribution of half atom and there are 4 interior atoms and all these add up to be 8 so the number of atoms in diamond structure is 8 Remember, diamond structure, it is a non probability lattice. So, it means that, that the atoms don't have the same orientation or surrounding. So, for the infinite array of atoms, each single atom should have the same orientation followed by other atoms. So, if you can see down here, although the carbon covalent bonding is done through a structure known as the tetrahedron structure, but the surroundings are different from everywhere. Diamond is a number of letters. And the coordination number of diamond is 4. This is easy to see by considering the interior atoms. Each atom has nearest neighbors that is 4. If this feels difficult for you, there's one other way to construct this diamond structure. 
The idea is that to have two body centered diagonal lattices unit cells. Let's proceed. If I just have this one unit cell here, and as I told you, that this unit cell should be body centered, one atom at body centered, the other should be diagonally. here so one along the diagonal over here you have to leave these two vacant and draw two above which should be up here and place an atom at the body center. Do the same for the diagonal over here. Now there you go. What you can see from here is that you have two body centered unit cells at the diagonally at the bottom and two at the top. From, if you look at the top, there's, there are empty unit cells at the bottom. And when you look at the bottom, there are empty unit cells at the top. So this is one way to construct a diamond structure. We have seen the diamond structure in three dimensions. Let's go and study it in two dimensions. Now to calculate the number of total atoms in 2D, you should have a two-dimension lattice in front of you. For example, if I just draw one carbon atom over here, the second one over here, and the third one, that will be my one edge, and these will be my vertical edges. There you go. Now this view is from the top, taken from the top. For example, if I have a unit cell over here and your eye is over here, you're watching it over here from the roof. Just pretend you're somewhere in the helicopter or in the sky, you're looking down. When you're gonna look down, you're gonna see the roofs. And if you can penetrate into the roof, you'll see the interior structure of any room. So the same case over here is over here, you're observing it from the top. So you're going to see all the construction, all the interior of the carbon atom. So here it is. If this is my zero point and once again this zero point, this zero point and this zero point, then these atoms represent the atoms at the face centers and we know that they have a half contribution. Similarly this one and this one and this will give the half contribution it means half of this part is outside and half is inside and uh, the first coordinate for the atom that we have observed was 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 the other one is 3 by 4 3 by 4 and this again 0 now these half quarter and 3 by 4 positions are taken from the base. In other words, these are the heights from the base. If I just take this point, this is the face center point and it is raised from the base at a distance of half. If I, and this will be somewhere over here. So the, the total length is one unit and this is 0.5 the half and this atom is face centered. Similarly, this one again stands over here and this over here at this face and the other face and this one comes to be the zero point. 
1 by 4 and 1 by 4 diagonally are the positions for the interior carbon atoms that are at the bottom. As we have seen, there were two diagonally at the bottom and two diagonally at the top. And these are raised at the height of 0.25 and 0.25. And similarly, again, the other diagonal raised at a height of 0.75 and 0.75. Now the positions of the interior atoms are 0, 0, 0, and 1 by 4, 1 by 4, and 1 by 4. These are the positions of the nearest atoms found in the tetrahedron structure. For example, if this is my corner atom, then this is my interior atom, then I have to travel a distance of a quarter and along the axis by a quarter and along z axis quarter to reach this point. So this is the position of the carbon atom. Now at the end, we'll look at the examples of a diamond structure. Well, a similar structures are also found in other elements. As I told you before, in group four, the first element is carbon, then silicon, germanium, tin, lead, so on. So all these elements in this group 4 periodic table have the same structure just like diamond structure. So they also make up to build up a structure similar just like a diamond.